Hi guys, okay, so this is gonna be a long awaited vlog about my job. People always ask me, you're a writer, what do you do, how did you get into it? So that's exactly what I'm going to explore in this vlog. It's probably gonna be very long, so get a beverage if you're interested in hearing my story. So let's start from the beginning. And let me get, I have some ice in here. Okay. So, first of all, I chose not to put this light on behind because it makes me look like this. So, so you can see my face. I wore the NYX. You're not going to be able to see it. You can see that I don't have any dark circles because, first of all, I've been working to correct them. And secondly, I'm using the NYX HD concealer for the first time. So, I started using some of the products that I purchased from Ulta. As I used them a few times, I will then review them for you. Okay, so, when I was a kid, of course, I wanted to be a teacher. I would sit in my room and make lesson plans, teach grade papers, and I would buy old books, old textbooks, and I would literally teach in my class. I contributed that to a big reason why I was such a smart kid and why I'm so knowledgeable about a lot of things because even when I wasn't in school I was like pretending to teach meaning I was reading and I was doing homework out of books what kid wants to do that so I wanted to be a psychologist and then in sixth grade for whatever reason I just decided I want to be a journalist um, and that's where it all began um, so pretty much decided I wanted to do that. I always wrote like newspapers for my family um, that included my aunts and uncles, my grandparents, and I would design them on like a publisher program and I would print them out and I would give them to my family, um, which my mom still has the copies of them. So it would just talk about news that was going on in the family. I thought it was really fun. Um, I did that starting I'm probably 12 years old. Um, then I like got my cousins to start helping me and um, I would do it and uh, I don't know. I know a lot of my... Oh my god, that's so cool. Sorry, I'm like distracted by a Too Faced palette. Um, so that's how it started. Eighth grade at school, junior high school, we had a newspaper club. We um, I wrote some stuff there. I always excelled in English. Um, I did struggle with grammar at first in seventh grade, which is where I learned the majority of it. But um, ever since, I've, you know, even in college, I got an A plus in grammar. I still struggle with who and whom sometimes and then and then um, and sometimes who and that um, but I think it's only natural I mean even though I write every day I mean you're gonna you're gonna second guess yourself. So what happened was in eighth grade I started writing for a teen site called kiwibox.com. Kiwibox.com still exists. I actually found it the other day when I was going through my rounds of looking for jobs. Um, they actually exist now but they're mostly a forum. Before it was all kinds of different articles. It was a free opportunity that I participated in. I wrote about television, music, books, um, different things that teens like. And then I uh, started just applying to different jobs that I saw online. I mean, I was like 14, 15 years old. My first gig, um, my first big gig was I wrote for PBS in um, News Hour with Jim Lair. Um, a lot of people know him. I mean, he's been around forever. I wrote about George Bush, and my perspective has a 15, just turned 16 year old kid. Um, from there, I, I continued to do like free work um, just to build my resume. Um, it's something you have to do. I wrote for an alternative magazine from my community um, and other stuff. Uh, so I did that. It also helped create a website called thinkgirl.net. It's since disfunct. Um, and it focused on uh, topics about women, women's rights, educating women on things that are going on with them around the world and um, anything and everything about women. So it became an organization I've since not been involved with anymore. I was a co-founder, co but um, the project is just went elsewhere. You know, I don't live in Michigan anymore. Um, and that was kind of, I always had a love for women's rights as well. I've lobbied on Capitol, Capitol Hill, which I think I shared in a random facts video. And um, I've been writing a women's study 
book for a while and you often see those kind of books in my book hall so um I just kept writing um you know I went to J school journalism school um and I obtained a internship paid eight dollars an hour which most of you if you guys know internships usually aren't paid at all so I was happy just I worked about I'd say 18 maybe hours a week maybe 20 it was it was money um I didn't really have many expenses in college um I had like my phone bill and a credit card bill which you know what did I have on my school books I didn't have much expenses and I had saved like five six thousand dollars before I went to college so just getting a paycheck you know of $150 or whatever a week I mean that was spending money for me so and uh, I also started working another job in between there, um, but I worked for a publishing company right across the, when I lived in Chicago, this was, and it was right across the street from the Chicago Tribune Tower building. It was a publishing company for intern, um, information technology, IT magazines, and I was a copywriter. I wrote and I helped design, and they really threw me in there. Um, I was told when I went through the process of it, I got the job uh, out of like over a hundred people they got a hundred applicants I think they said they pulled in 10 to interview so I made the 10 percent cut then they um, I went to interview and I was literally at like a long table with five people and me for my first interview like for my first interview for an in-house journalism job ever um, so I um, mind you I've done a few other jobs before this, but I'm trying to talk about writing, just so you guys know. So, um, they liked me, and um, they liked my enthusiasm and my passion, and they were really, really surprised by how much I've done. And I was only, what, 20? 20 or 21? 20. I was 20 years old. Um, so, they called me back in. They called three of us back in out of 10. So, then again... I made a 3% cut, and then out of the three, I was chosen. So literally 1%, 1 out of 100. Um, so it was good. It was very short. It was a couple months um, process. And at that time, I started doing some freelance writing, paid online, and also um, uh, just paid content articles. Just It just kind of fell into my lap, just looking around the Internet, applying for things just for extra money and I started coming up with you know making a couple more hundred dollars a week so a college student I mean pulling in three fifty four hundred dollars a week with you know what a hundred and twenty five dollars worth of bills I mean I was doing really good so um I moved from Chicago and then from there moved home for six weeks moved to New Jersey to finish school at that point March before I moved from Chicago in May of 2006 and in March of 2006 I a couple months before that I was working for an accountant like $16 an hour I mean for a college kid <laughs> you know I was getting like you know three something a week um, plus the 200 and something I was pulling well over two thousand dollars um, just as a college kid which and really what was I working not much um, and full-time school and still maintaining A's in one B. Um, so I have always been an overachiever. I like to be busy. It keeps my mind sane. Um, so then from there, I started my business, and I've worked from home since March 2006, so seven and a half years now. Um, and I write for Yahoo. Um, I write for different skincare companies and beauty companies. I write, I mean, all the topics and all the clients that I work for, I cannot go talk about in a video because it's just too much. Um, I do, every week I do a blog for a dentist. I, um, do weight loss surgery articles. Um, I started working with other ones. I did. I just did copy for a personal stylist. Um, I do press releases. I have two of those to write. Um, work as very slow. This kind of type of work. I don't care if you're a freelance illustrator, freelance graphic designer, freelance technical writer. I don't, any kind of freelance work or work from home work is inconsistent. And meaning, I have worked with so many people over the years and. Um, no matter whenever you start to feel secure is when it falls out and everyone will disappear at once it just happened to me this last month i made enough to make my bills but i wasn't comfortable with how much i was making i'm used to being able to bank and save i'm very responsible with my money 
So when I sense that things are not on the right track, I mean, I track everything. I have an Excel thing for my earnings for the entire year. Every line of every invoice is a line on the thing. It tracks how much I've earned with each client. It tracks how much I've made each month, each quarter. I'm very organized, okay? Um, you have to be when you work from home because one, you are finding work. You are arranging the work. You do the work, you edit the work, you invoice the work, you do the communications, you do your billing, you know your taxes, you do your, you're in charge for every facet of your business. Um, it comes very naturally to me now, it's something that you learn as you go along, what works for you. Um, I've written so many things, I can't even tell you. I mean, I've written for so many different companies, written... I, I do write magazine and newspaper work once in a while. I write under pen names for certain things. Um, it's it's normal for me now, but till this day, like still seven and a half years later, people say, oh, what do you do? Oh, I work from home. That's usually what I say because the minute that I feel like I say I'm a writer, they're like, oh. And then they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do freelance writing, copywriting, copy editing, proofreading, sales copy, product descriptions, um... And the list goes on. And then, you know, it gets going. Oh, how long have you done in that? Uh, seven and a half years, you know, full time, but since 2000. Wow, how old are you? 28. Wow, you've been doing this since you're a teen? Yeah, and then the pro it just goes through. So, um, this is my, um, sorry, my nose is really edgy. Um, this is my advice to you. If you want to write or you want to do something from home, and you could do so many things from home, okay? Like if you're an artist um, or you create, you know, you make your own jewelry and you want to post it on Etsy or different sites, um, you want to do transcriptions, you want to do um, data entry. I mean, there's a ton of jobs that you can do from home um, or even freelance photography graphic design, illustrations, art, um, you know, there's a zillion different things. I am so itchy. My allergies are so nuts. My whole face is itching right now. Um, definitely, first of all, if you have any questions um, about working from home in general or whatever, send me an uh, inbox and I'll definitely help you out um, and maybe point you in the, the right direction. Um, it's a learn as you go thing. Everything doesn't work for every freelancer. Um, everyone's market, everyone's niche, everyone's interest, everyone's experience, everyone what they think is fair pay. Everything is relative to the person. Um, oh, and that's another thing. People always say, do you make money doing that? Um, you know, certain things, I make money. I mean, I pay my bills. I have money in the bank. Um, but it's inconsistent. One month, you could make $5,000. Another month you make twenty five hundred dollars, so you have to be very smart about your money. You can't just say, "Oh, I made five grand this month." Oh, you know, I paid my bills. I got three thousand dollars left. Oh, let me just go and blow a thousand dollars at the mall, you know. And then the next month you come up only five hundred ahead, or not even after you gas up and groceries and everything. Um, so my advice in anything, whether you work out of the house or not, is to be to. Write down all your expenses for the month. And um, budget. Um, I don't necessarily write it all down. Sometimes when I feel like money, when I'm not going to make a lot for the month, that's when I do it. And then I'll say, you know, this job will pay for this bill. This job will pay for this, this, this bill. This job will pay for part of the rent. Um, and it's for my sanity, okay? So whatever works for you, works for you. But that's my job. I'm so fortunate to work from home. It gets very difficult sometimes. It gets very stressful. It's on me. Um, I'm still very stressed right now. I might have a lot of work for Monday. Um, but what about Tuesday? What about Wednesday? Um, so I've been pretty much writing whatever I can and accepting money that I might ne not necessarily always taken but any money is better than no money and that's what I'm learning so you have to realize you're going to sacrifice it's going to be a struggle it's going to be very stressful and a lot of people can't do it so that's my job and I hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any other questions about it like I said inbox me leave me a comment I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll talk to you later bye